Hey guys, Tripter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare Remastered in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Mini Uzi Submachine Gun. This is one of my least used weapons in Modern Warfare Remastered, and one of the ones that you see least often online, but not without good reason. Unfortunately, it is not a great gun. I'm not going to tell you it's a terrible gun, or the worst thing ever, or that you can't kill people with it, because that's not true, but it's not as competitive as the AK-74U or P90. One interesting fact about this weapon before we get into the stats, though, is is that this is a gun that I've actually fired in real life, so I had of experience with how the real Uzi works compared to the in-game Uzi, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit here at the beginning of the episode just for fun, but let's go back in time to the year 2012 when I was a little bit less gray and I went to a gun range here in Dallas, Texas with Cross and was maybe a little bit more into dubstep. Alright, we're shooting a suppressed Uzi submachine gun. It's fully automatic. As much as I would love to hose people, it's bloody expensive, so I'm just going to shoot a nice little burst. And it won't be quite as loud because we have a suppressor. In real life, suppressors don't make guns go pew, 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 like on TV, but it won't quite burst the eardrums. Aim at the air. We're going to do a mad shoot and go try to pull my body forward. I was expecting this to take like a mule. Really didn't do that. Hardly any. That's why the Uzi's quite a nice submachine gun. Look at that. I'm a noob at this. And this guy's completely dead. He's not far away. Either. So yeah, that's me firing a real Uzi, and one thing I can tell you right off the bat is that a real Uzi is much, much more accurate than the one in the game. Uzis, unfortunately, are stereotyped as cheap, crappy, terroristy kind of weapons that have high recoil, when in real life they're actually very low recoil, very reliable, awesome Israeli-made uh, submachine guns. But all that aside, let's jump into the stats of the weapon finally. The damage will be 30 up close, and it'll decrease down to 20 at a distance. What this means means is that it can take between four and five shots to kill, which is identical to the P90 in Modern Warfare Remastered or COD 4. Unfortunately, this is very low damage, and it means that more often than not, you're going to get a lot of hit markers. So choose your sidearm well and be prepared to knife on occasion. However, if you run stopping power, it'll deal 42 damage up close and decrease down to 28 at a distance, which is much better. That means it'll be three to four shots to kill depending on your range. However, unlike most weapons, I'm actually not going to recommend stopping power on this gun. I'm going to recommend you run UAV jammer later on, so most of the gameplay you see here will be without stopping power. Headshots, thankfully, are always useful at 1.4x damage, given the damage profile of the weapon and how it works with stopping Stopping power headshots will benefit you if you're using stopping power or not close range or long range they're pretty much always going to help you so there's no shame whatsoever in going for headshots if you can control the recoil range is a little bit lower on this weapon the maximum four shot kill range that is without stopping power of course is 21 meters which is similar to the mp5's three shot kill range however if you run a suppressor that's going to be minus 40 percent all that being said i would tell you to make a mental note to not try and count your shots to kill my experience is that I typically need half to a whole magazine to kill one person because the recoil makes it very, very unreliable. One of the reasons it has such high recoil is because it fires at 952 rounds per minute, making it the highest in the submachine gun class. This is the fastest firing submachine gun in Modern Warfare Remastered, so if you want a bullet hose, or if you just like fast firing guns, the Mini Uzi is the way to go. You can actually take it up to almost 1300 rounds per minute if you put on double tap, which is extremely fast for any Call of Duty game, much less MWR. It can be incredibly deadly with double tap. And because of the high rate of fire, the Uzi will have surprisingly fast theoretical time to kill. The time to kill on the Uzi is not that bad, despite the damage and range limitations. It can kill people pretty quickly if you land all of your shots. But again, given the limitation of the recoil, which we'll talk about later, that is going to be unlikely. So your practical or experiential time to kill is going to be much slower. Magazine size is 32, which is slightly better than standard of 30. No complaints about that. I'll take the two extra bullets. You never know when the last bullet's going to kill somebody in a clutch moment, so that's good. And it's tied for the second slowest reloading speed in the submachine gun class. There's uh, actually tied with three of them, so it's not that bad. It just does reload a little bit on the slow side, which is definitely annoying for a weapon that dumps out ammo so quickly. 
One interesting aspect of the Uzi is that it has very low idle sway and it has standard submachine gun handling statistics. A lot of the SMGs have high idle sway, they'll wobble around, some of the assault rifles do. That's not an issue with the Uzi, it's a very steady, stable weapon and it handles very quickly, fast, aim down sights, fast, swap time, good hip fire, all that sort of stuff. So nothing really surprising there. The big surprise, well, if you've used it for more than two minutes, it's not that surprising, is that the Uzi has extremely high and unpredictable recoil. It's it's really bad. This makes it neither accurate nor precise. It kicks up, it kicks left, it kicks right, it kicks in large magnitudes, no magnitudes. I have a very, very difficult time getting a feel for it. I've actually chosen some clips here that show off just how much the weapon kicks, and no, I'm not just that bad at aiming. The Uzi is very, very difficult to aim, and that's really the only thing that stops it from being a top-tier submachine gun in the game. If you have godlike recoil control, if you're playing on PC with mouse and keyboard, if you can handle this weapon, it can easily be the best in the game. However, the recoil is so bad, I find that almost no players, myself included, are able to properly handle it. The hip fire, on the other hand, is very good due to the high rate of fire, especially with steady aim. It is very easy to just hose people with hip fire. I do that almost as much as I aim down sights. And speaking of sights, the iron sights are obstructive and ugly, but oddly enough, they shake less than the optics, so I tend to prefer the iron sights on this gun. That's a very paradoxical thing, but when you run the red dot or ACOG sight, the fast rate of fire and recoil is very violent on the dot or the optics. It shakes them a lot. It actually makes it more difficult for me to track targets. I much prefer the look and feel of the iron sights, and I would recommend that to you over the optics. However, speaking of optics, the ACOG has no major penalties on this weapon. I've kind of downplayed the ACOG a lot in a lot of episodes because it does have a lot of downsides. However, on the Mini Uzi, all it does is increase the idle sway a bit, but there's no penalties. The hip fire, rate of fire, recoil, nothing funny like that. ACOG really doesn't hurt you, but given the recoil on the gun and how difficult it can be to begin with, I have a hard time fathoming any of you are going to have a fun time with the ACOG site. And when it comes down to my recommendations, I'm going to tell you that the Uzi is just not a good gun, and I don't recommend using it ever. It's just too difficult to use in a game where there's so many powerful, easy-to-use weapons. There's pretty much no time that I ever think, boy, I'm going to get up and use the Uzi today, especially not when the P90 outclasses it in pretty much every conceivable way. The P90 is just the Uzi's older brother. It's the bigger, better version of the gun. It might shoot just a smidgen slower, but if you're thinking about using the Uzi, use the P90 instead, and I promise you that you'll be much, much happier. When it comes to recommended classes, I think the Mini Uzi is best used as a stealth weapon. It's so hard to kill people with. My best uh, results with it was basically just sneaking up behind people and shooting them in the back. So I use UAV Jammer, Suppressor, Steady Aim, and I also use Bandolier because I run out of ammo very quickly. If I'm going for Exclusion Zone camo or Gold camo or something like that, this is what you're going to see me using on my Uzi because at least I'll be able to get close enough to kill people. Guys, that's all for this in-depth episode. I do have a bonus at the end, but if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out. P.S. I'm doing something a little bit unusual here today. I've got a bit of bonus gameplay where I managed to get a 10-kill streak with my Uzi, and the rest of my teammates pretty much didn't die and massacred the enemy team, and we're going to make them forfeit in just a few seconds. All six of the players are going to back out when they're just dropping one bars and goose eggs. Are you